This afternoon we're going to talk about the second lesson of the Holy Spirit, uh, to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. Uh, this comes at the end of chapter 6. As you, as you probably know, there are three, three lessons of the Holy Spirit, and this is the second one. Um, and uh, I want to focus on this uh, because it, it, it makes a very important point that if we want to feel peace, if we want to feel love, if above all we want to feel forgiven, then we have to forgive, then we have to love. Uh, if I feel that I'm not getting enough respect, as that famous uh, comedian would always say, then I have to be respectful of other people. If I feel I'm not being treated kindly or compassionately or with sensitivity, then I have to act kindly and be compassionate and act towards others with sensitivity. Uh, to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. And the idea is that, that, the, that, that peace is something we have to learn, which really means peace is something we have to unlearn because we have to unlearn the ego's decision to be in conflict. Right. So it's really not that we learn peace, we unlearn our decision to be conflicted. And to be conflicted means that we perceive differences. I'm in conflict with everyone and everything in my world. Uh, if the world doesn't act in a certain way and provide for me in a certain way, I, I could end up psych uh, physically dying and psychologically dying. So that, again, this is what, what special relationships are all about, that we're dependent on the world, things outside of us, to meet our needs. This automatically puts us in conflict because uh, we want something from somebody else because secretly we believe that person took it from us, which is why it's lacking in us. That's what the fourth uh, law of chaos is. Uh, you have what you've taken. If I don't feel love and I don't have feel peace, and I think you, you have that love and I want it from you, then you have it because you took it from me because I don't have it. That's the ego thought system. It's insane, but it's very logical. And it, unfortunately, it governs, that insanity governs how we uh, behave with, with the world, how we interact with other people, and of course how we see ourselves. So uh, to have a special relationship, to live in the world as a body with needs, automatically puts us in conflict. Because again, I believe I need something from outside and I don't believe it will be forthcoming. Right? So in, if I really want to be peaceful, I have to undo conflict because to be in a perpetual state of conflict is hardly peaceful. We're always, we always have to be on our guard. We always have to be on the lookout for, for what will meet our needs or what will interfere with the meeting of our needs. So to be truly at peace means I have to look at my mind's decision for conflict and say, I don't want this anymore. To have peace, teach peace, to learn it. So I have to. So what does it mean to teach peace? It means the end of conflict. But what does conflict mean? Conflict really means that I perceive the sonship as fragmented. I believe that the members of the, the split off fragments of the sonship, its members, are different from each other. And all of this is a fragmentary shadow of the original thought <clears throat> that we all carry within us that we are different from God. That's the, that's the key of the ego thought system. I am different from God. I'm not perfectly at one with perfect oneness. I'm not a oneness joined as one. I'm not uh, this differentiated self. I'm part of the undifferentiated unity. Right? Which is why the Course tells us that there is really, no, really no, no trinity. Jesus says God is first in the Holy Trinity, but there's no second or third. There's only one, perfect oneness. But when we believe we had separated, we now say there are, there are two We're in the world of duality. That's the world of differences that quickly leads to the world of judgment and attack. And then we project that out and see everyone is different. So what it means to teach peace is I must see everyone is the same, which means I no longer justify the judgments I am making about other people. This doesn't mean that we're not going to have judgments. But it does mean, as that section of Practicing the Holy Instance says, that we will not have any judgments, <clears throat> any unholy thoughts that we would keep. In other words, that we recognize our judgments when they come. We don't seek to justify them or spiritualize them or deny them, but we bring them to the Holy Spirit or Jesus. We bring the illusion of our judgments to the, to the, to the truth of, of, uh, <clears throat> of our universal sameness. And that's what it means to look with Jesus at the ego. So if I truly am, am serious that I, that I, I want peace, right? as the workbook lesson says, I want the peace of God. To say these words is nothing, but to mean these words is everything. If I really say and mean I want the peace of God, I want to have that peace of God, I want to experience that peace of God, then I must teach it to other people, otherwise I won't learn that peace is preferable to conflict. That the vision of the sameness of God's Son 
is far preferable to the ego's vision or the ego's uh, way of looking that sees everyone as different uh, and, and making judgment real. The Course says vision or judgment are your choice, but not both of these. We can't have vision and judgment at the same time. We choose one or the other. So I have to look at my thought system of judgment and seeing other people separate from me, uh, warranting my judgment to them, seeking that I know better than, than they what's best for them. I look at that and say, this is keeping me from the kingdom. This is keeping me from awakening from the dream. And why would I do that? I no longer choose to be insane. So I can now truly say and mean to have peace, I want to teach it so I will learn it. I'm asking Jesus to help me see everyone, every situation as the same, calling forth the same love that's within me, the same love that I am feeling from Him, I now want to let extend through me and embrace all people without exception.